as the cliché goes, Rome wasn't built in a day. Neither did the ancient world's greatest power fall in a single calamity, as believed by some historians. Rome's history is long and complicated. A village grew into the eternal city, which is still a marvel today. A monarchy became a republic, then an empire. Italy was conquered before Europe, and parts of Africa and the Near and Middle East were absorbed into an empire that ruled over a quarter of the world's population. This 1,000-year-plus history is complicated and intriguing. So, here are some facts to help you understand how the ancient Romans lived. Hello and welcome to our channel. Today, we're going to tell some facts about how ancient Romans lived. So, let us begin. The family was the foundation of Roman society which was maintained and governed by the father, the household's leader, known as the pater familias. The father had entire power over the lives of all who lived in his home, and he could even reject a newborn child, ordering it to be abandoned in the streets if he couldn't afford another child or simply didn't like the way it looked. The emperor adopted the concept of the pater familias portraying himself as the grandfather of the collective Roman people who only had their best interests at heart in many, but not all, circumstances. Amphitheaters for amusement, religious and cultural festivals such as Saturnalia and Lupercalia among many others, and public parks and Roman baths were provided by the emperor. Roman baths were purpose-built structures or buildings that were used for bathing during the Roman era. Thermae, big imperial baths, and balne, little imperial baths, were the two principal types of baths, small public or private baths. Bathing houses were extremely popular, and nearly every Roman city had at least one. There were several in most cities. These baths were not only used for bathing, but they were also a popular social gathering spot. They also had a gym, libraries, places to buy and consume food, and a lounging space for socializing, in addition to the bathing facility. Bathing was regarded as a part of healthy living by the Romans, and most of them bathed at least once a day. The concept of modern-day spas was born from Roman bathhouses. Romans were concerned with bathing because they considered it was a vital element of a healthy lifestyle, along with massage, exercise, and eating. The smart Romans created aqueducts, a system of canals and bridges to transport water for public baths and toilets to deliver water to their towns. The Romans valued food as much as any other culture, but the concept of a lavish feast in which guests sat on pillows, drank wine, and were served by slaves was limited to the upper crust of Rome and its provinces. The majority of individuals ate a light breakfast before moving on to a larger meal in the mid to late afternoon, which consisted of whatever they could afford. Most meals included olive oil, which was utilized both in the preparation of the dish and as a bread dipping sauce. The Romans loved sauces, and the most popular was garum, a fermented fish paste that went with almost everything. Spices including celery seeds, coriander, dates, honey, and vinegar were used to season their meals. The Romans enjoyed their meals and often ate with their hands while lying down on a couch. They might occasionally use a spoon, but never a knife or fork. Exotic foods such as stork, roast parrot, and even flamingo were popular among the wealthy Romans. The dress of the Romans was very important, and rich Romans followed current fashion trends. 
The clothing was created and labeled in such a way that it reflected the man's social rank. Ordinary residents wore unmarked clothing, while those in political or administrative positions had their attire marked to indicate their social status. The toga was a characteristic garment worn by male inhabitants of Rome. Married women wore a different garment called a stole, though they used to wear a toga, which was later abandoned. Unmarried girls wore merely tunics. Tunics were the most prevalent clothing in Rome, consisting of two pieces of woolen fabric sewn together at the sides and shoulders with openings for your arms and head. The Romans used to wash their garments in urine. Ancient Romans used to wash their garments in pee because urine contains ammonia, a powerful bleaching agent. Men could use public urinals on many street corners, and the contents were collected daily and delivered to the laundries. While many girls stayed at home with their moms to help with household chores, some girls were permitted to attend school alongside the boys. Schools were frequently one-room affairs that resembled a tiny Roman store, such as a bakery. Schoolmasters or teachers were frequently stern, particularly those who adhered to Aristotle's dictum that young people do not play when they are studying. In these schoolhouses, education was taken very seriously. Many of the subjects studied were the same as those taught in schools today. Math was tough in school, since all numbers were made up of six Roman letters, I, V, X, L, C, and M. The leisure time of the Romans was highly cherished. Adults and children were free to explore other interests after dinner, including music, art, dance, reading, and athletics. Many people went to see performances while others watched chariot racing. There were numerous entertainment alternatives available. Gladiator battles, for example, drew enormous crowds every time. Many Romans spent their time in gardens and fields, providing fresh supplies for their families. Children assisted and took advantage of the opportunity to learn more about their families and Roman history from their parents. Moreover, for boat combat, the Romans would sometimes flood the entire Colosseum or Circus Maximus. Like alligators, large boats topped with soldiers fought it out in the water down to the live props. Pets were very different in the Roman world than they are today. Greyhound dogs, ferrets, tiny monkeys, blackbirds, nightingales, parrots, and other breeds of animals were among the pets. Exotic animals were frequently brought in from other locations, and there were many different species of animals that lived throughout ancient Roman times. Dogs were some of the most important pets during the period of the ancient Romans. Dogs were quite popular and greyhounds were one of the most popular breeds. There were many other dog breeds that were forebears of the greyhound dog, such as the Laconian, Molossian, and Viraguas. Dogs were utilized to defend the neighborhood and safeguard the homes from thieves in ancient Rome. Sometimes you'd see a dog chained to a house or a fence while the owners were away. The Romans, for the most part, did not possess cats. In some regions, cats were popular, but not in Rome. The majority of Romans possessed ferrets, which were kept to keep rodents and mice out of the area. The architecture of Roman houses reveals a lot about Roman culture, society, and history. In Rome, there were basically two types of housing. The vast majority of regular Roman citizens or persons from lower social classes lived in insula apartment complexes, whereas the wealthy and prominent Romans lived in massive and magnificent domus complexes. Many wealthy Romans also had sumptuous country estates known as villas. Insulae 
were small apartments used by poor Romans to live in. Normally, they were five to seven stories tall. Some had as many as nine stories. A typical insula was constructed around a courtyard, with buildings on three sides of the courtyard and a wall on the fourth to keep invaders out. The courtyard was used for cooking, washing, and socializing by the occupants. A typical insula house roughly housed 40 people and had six or seven apartments. There were only one or two rooms in each unit. Larger and more sumptuous house complexes known as domus were owned by wealthy and important Romans in the cities. A typical domus featured a street-facing door that opened into an entrance hall that led to an atrium patio. The atrium was a central hall surrounded by rooms. The master of the mansion, Dominus, had chambers all around the atrium for himself and his family. People were married for life in ancient Rome, and the only way to get out of it was to die. The Romans would take their time in selecting a suitable companion for their son or daughter. The son's father was responsible for finding someone appropriate for his children to marry. They would scour the neighborhood for the ideal match for their children, and then the families would sign a contract allowing them to decide whether or not the couple should marry. People in ancient Rome were not permitted to marry more than one person at a time. In addition, both the bride and groom had to be adults. Many weddings in ancient Rome were arranged for political reasons. When someone marries, they become a member of both families. And if the family's politics are popular, they will desire their offspring to marry into a political family. Games were a huge component of ancient Roman culture. Playing games was enjoyable for both children and adults. There were some games that were highly severe, such as gladiator games and others that children enjoyed playing. Children in ancient Rome enjoyed playing games such as Battle Door, which was akin to badminton. The children would smash a pine cone or another round object with flat paddles to get points in this game. Another game included the children throwing pebbles and picking up sticks on a gaming board. Children in ancient Rome used to play games akin to hockey, basketball, and baseball. Young adults and children would frequently come together to play board games. Many of the board games are comparable to the games we play today. Latrunculin, for example, was a game that was comparable to how we play chess now. Tabula was a game similar to backgammon, and other games included Terni Lapili, a game similar to tic-tac-toe, and various board games using pieces carved by hand out of clay or wood. Sporting events were also popular. Sports were immensely popular during the period of the ancient Romans. Wrestling, jumping, racing, boxing, swimming, and other sports were among the most popular. The majority of the time, girls and women did not participate in any form of sport, and the majority of the time, girls and women did not participate in any type of sport. So that is about all the time we had today, folks. Don't forget to subscribe and do hit the bell icon to remain updated about all our future videos.